Hi, my name is Kevin Devine, and I'm the director of the TR060, the Biological and Biomedical Sciences Program at Trinity College in Dublin. When I think of life, I think of the great variation and diversity there is among living organisms, everything from bacteria and fungi all the way through insects, nematodes, plants and animals, and the great diversity of form and color and size that's represented here. And even if you focus in on one order, the Lepidoptera, you can see among these butterflies, you can see all of them clearly butterflies, but again a great diversity and variation in color and in size and in shape and in pattern. Charles Darwin talked about this, this great diversity and talked about endless forms of life most beautiful. If you think of beetles, there are 350,000 species of beetles. Beetles of all shapes and colors and sizes. And if you even focus in on one type of beetle, the ladybird, you can see diversity and variation in the number of spots, the placement of spots, and the type of spots that are located on the, on the, on the surface. When the great biologist J.B.S. Haldane was asked at the end of his career, was there one great message that he got from his study of biology? And he said, the creator, if one exists, had a great fondness for beetles. If you think also of the variation in dogs, Dogs vary in size from tiny dogs of less than half a kilogram in weight all the way through to huge dogs, uh, 50 kilograms. And there's, in that variation, there's variation in size and in shape and in color and in behavior. And the interesting thing about uh, dogs is all dogs are, in fact, domesticated gray wolves. In other words, this great diversity of dogs has... Uh, has evolved from the gray wolf. So a huge diversity and variation among living organisms. And yet there's a great unity to life. The great biologist Jack Mono said that if you understand the Escherichia coli, then you understand an elephant. So what did he mean by this? He meant that there's a fundamental uh, unity to all life forms. And if you can understand the bacterium Escherichia coli, then the same principles will apply to the cells of the elephant. So what is this unity of life? Well, this all life is, is, is cellular and cells are the basic unit of all life. There are in fact three different types of cells. There are the prokaryotes, which are the U bacteria, the regular bacteria. There are eukaryotic, eukaryotic cells, which are animal and plant cells. And then there are archaeo, archaeota, uh, archaeobacteria. These are bacteria that are found in, in hot springs and in very strange, extreme environments. There are both unicellular and multicellular organisms. And even within the, the eukaryotic uh, organisms, the organelles we know and see there, like the mitochondria and chloroplasts, we know that they're derived from prokaryotic cells. So the specialized cells are built into tissues, tissues into organs, organs into systems, and then into multicellular organisms. Another great universal feature of life is that DNA is the hereditary material for all life. DNA in all organisms is composed of adenine and guanine, cytosine and thymine, sometimes in viruses and uracil. And the three-letter uh, words of the genetic code are, uh, by and large, the same in all organisms. For example, the CGA codon, which encodes the arginine amino acid, encodes arginine in bacteria, in beetles, in bats, and in beech trees. So there's a great unity to life. So we have a great unity to life forms at the same time as having this great diversity. So how are these two concepts linked? They're linked 
by a phrase from the great uh, geneticist Theodosius Dobzhansky, who said, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And of course, evolution is what unifies biology. It unifies the, these concepts of the unity of life and explains how that even though the unit, there is a unity to life, how we can generate diversity uh, in life forms. And we generate diversity in life forms by the generation of variants and mutants. And these <clears throat> variants and mutants uh, interact with their environment and compete with each other uh, for resources. <clears throat> and through a process of survival of the fittest, these go on and thrive and in turn generate more mutants. So this great diversity of life is generated through the process of evolution acting on fundamental uh, life uh, processes. And this has given us the, the tree of life, the universal evolutionary tree, where we have the, the three great domains of life, the bacteria here, the archaebacteria here, and then all eukaryotes, uh, animals, fungi, plants, ciliates, and so on. And it's this plan that gives us the, the, the fundamental plan for our course uh, in TRO 60, the Biological and Biomedical Sciences Program. <clears throat> so we will tell you about the great fundamental processes that are in all living organisms. And this is, these are the, the biological molecules that are, uh, from which biological systems are made. We talk about the biochemistry, DNA, and genetics, and energy metabolism. These are fundamental processes in all life forms. We tell you about how single cells become multicellular organisms. We tell, tell you about multicellular life. We tell you about how multicellular life develops. We talk about the physiology of multicellular systems and we talk about behavior and biodiversity. And then, of course, we tell you about evolutionary processes, about DNA, how variants and mutants are made. We talk about mutation of DNA and we talk about how this uh, drives the process of evolution. And, of course, uh, a, a fundamental aspect of evolution is the generate of generation of mutants in populations uh, and how these populations interact both with each other and how they interact with the environment. So we tell you about ecology and the environment and, the, and, and population structure. So it's these processes then <clears throat> that inform the, the organization of the modular structure of the course. So these are the, the three um, modules the fundamental modules in biology that we present. One from molecules to cells. So this is the, the molecular aspects of biology, biological molecules, DNA, genetics, mutation, the biochemistry of life, energy metabolism. This is uh, uh, biology at the molecular level. And then we have modules called from cells to organisms. This tells us about multicellular life, about the development of multicellular organisms, the physiology of multicellular systems, and their behavior and neuroscience. And then the third module from organisms to ecosystems talks about the biodiversity, population structure, evolution, ecology, and the environment. So these modules then cover the range of, biolo of biological studies from the molecular at the molecular uh, level all the way through to multicellular organisms interacting with themselves and with their environment. Now this is the structure of the of the biological and biomedical sciences stream. <clears throat> it's a four-year stream and the first two years are foundation years. These are the years where we give you the fundamental concepts and the fundamental grounding in all the basic uh, concepts, uh, biological concepts. Where years three and four are the years in which you specialize. And in the uh, foundation years, in the first year and second year, you will do what are called core modules 
an elective or open approved modules. And the core modules uh, will be modules presenting fundamental concepts and knowledge and skill of biological and biomedical systems. Elective or open modules are modules in associated disciplines that uh, will broaden your knowledge and contribute to the breadth of understanding you have of biological systems. So these two years then are foundational for all students who enter the, the TRO60 uh, biological and biomedical stream, sciences stream. And then at the end of uh, second year, you make a decision because in years three and four are years in which you specialize. And we have 11 moderatorships or 11 de degree programs, and they're listed here, biochemistry, botany, environmental sciences, genetics, human genetics, immunology, microbiology, molecular medicine, neuroscience, physiology, and zoology. And all students who successfully complete their second year program are eligible to do any and all of the 11 moderatorships. And each moderatorship has a quota of students who will enter that moderatorship. And the allocation uh, of moderatorships is made at the end of second year. It's based on your performance in your second year exams, and it's based on your performance and, of course, your choice of moderatorship. So at the end of second year, then, you would choose in which area you want to specialize. The molecular the sciences like biochemistry, genetics, human genetics, immunology, the uh, more uh, multicellular, multicellular uh, organisms, neuroscience, uh, physiology, um, uh, and then the, the uh, third area of specialization zoology and botany and environmental sciences. But of course, even though these are presented as individual, individual moderatorships, there's a great level of overlap among these moderatorships. So for example, when you study microbiology or botany or zoology, of course, you will also study the biochemistry and, and genetics and, and, and uh, of, of, of these uh, as part of those moderatorships. So the core biology modules then that you study in first year, there are two core biology molecules from molecules to cells. This is the molecular uh, biological sciences. And then from organisms to ecosystems, the more organismal. And then in the second year, these two modules are expanded to three from molecules to cells, from cells to organisms, and from organisms to ecosystems. So these are the, the fundamental uh, modules, the, the, module, the fundamental modules uh, in, in biology, the, what we call the core modules. Now let me tell you about the structure of the course. So in your junior freshman year, so this is the first year, there are two semesters. And the first semester, the Michel, is, it takes place in the Michaelmas term, and it runs from September to December and the second semester from uh, January, February, right through until April. And you will see that the two bio fundamental biology modules, from molecules to cells, this is a 10 credit module, and from organisms to ecosystems, this is a 10 credit module. Uh, uh, molecules to cells will be presented in the first semester, and organisms to ecosystems in the second semester. Now, of course, to get a fundamental understanding of biological systems, you need to know uh, chemistry. And we have a module, a 10 credit module, in, presented in the first semester called Chemistry for Life Sciences. So this is fundamental chemistry, but with a slant towards studying chemistry that's appropriate and relevant for the life sciences. And in the second semester, you'll do a module on mathematics, statistics, and computation. Biology is more and more becoming a, a large data uh, um, uh, um, study, a study of, of large data sets, and you need the mathematical and statistical and computational skills to deal with these uh, large data sets. So these will give you fundamental competencies 
in both chemistry and also in math stats and computation. So these are your core modules, uh, two core modules, 20 credits in the first semester, two core modules, 20 credits in the second semester. Now, in addition to that, you choose an open or an elective, an optional module. And this is the selection. You have Spaceship Earth, an introduction to Earth si uh, system science, uh, 10 credits. Introduction to geology, uh, a beginner's guide to planet Earth, also 10 credits. We also have foundation physics for life and Earth sciences. So there's a module presented in the first semester and a module in the second semester. So you will choose to do that in one or other semester. And then the module on science education and communication. Again, you can do that in the first and the second semester. So in addition to the 20 core credits, you must choose one of these three modules in the first semester and one of these three modules in the second semester. And of course, you can't do the same module in both semesters. Now in the senior freshman year, and that's the second year, again, you do uh, 40 core credits, uh, 20 credits in the first semester and 20 credits in the second semester. And in the first semester, you will do a 10 credit module from molecules to cells. You will also do a, a module of statistics and computation, building on the competencies from the module presented in first year. And in addition to that, we have a five credit module on the history, philosophy and ethics of science. In the second semester, we have the two core uh, biology modules from cells to organisms. 10 credit module and then from organisms to ecosystems another 10 credit module again these are the core modules that are taken by all students studying uh, in this stream now again you choose 10 credits uh, in each semester and this time you have uh, to choose 10 credits from among, among this selection in the first semester and this selection of modules in the second semester. So in the first semester, we have a, a five credit module on sustainable production, molecular nutrition, uh, a geology from atoms to rocks, uh, sedimentary processes in the environment, and influences on animal behavior. So you choose 10 credits, one 10 credit module, or two five credit modules. In the second semester, again, you choose 10 credits from this from this selection, uh, a five credit module, genomes, disease and diversity, microbes, immune systems and their interactions, chemistry for biologists, dynamic earth and Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometry. So a summary then, these are the, 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 the courses and the modules that you study in the first two years. And then you make a decision, as I said, to study and specialize in one of the 11 moderatorships in your third and fourth year. As I said, all students are qualified for all the moderatorships and you choose uh, which moderatorships you would like in which you would like to specialize. And since each has a quota, they're allocated based on your choice and also on your performance in your uh, second year exam. Now, in years and four, you specialize in your degree subject, and this is your main area of study. For example, genetics or zoology or botany and so on. In third year and fourth year, you'll be taught by researchers. These will be leaders in, the, in, in their own field. The classes are smaller uh, in third year and fourth year. For example, the, in, the, in first year and second year, there are uh, in the region of 240 students studying science, studying all those modules. Whereas in third year and fourth year, each moderatorship will be taking something like 20 to 30 students in that region. There will be smaller classes in size, and we'll have more tutorials, more face-to-face -face teaching, more discussion, uh, as well as lectures and practicals. And this will be done very much from a research point of view. You'll be trained in trained to do research by researchers and in that way teaching you how to, to think creatively and independently. And in addition to that, you, would have, you do a capstone uh, research project. In other words, 
each student will be assigned to a particular uh, researcher to do a project in their fourth year. And this is research-led teaching. In other words, each student will be given a topic to do some uh, practical research. This can be in a lab, uh, it can be in the field, it can be some bioinformatics research. And this is real research. It's research, not like practicals, where very much we know the answers, but this is research at the cutting edge, giving you a problem and asking you to, to do research on this topic and to generate some new knowledge. And let me give you uh, a little information about the Capstone project. All students do a research project. It's worth 10, 10 credits. You'll be supervised by a leading researcher, a PI in their field. The topic will be part of the, the principal investigator's ongoing research. So you'll be part of a laboratory for, for up to 10 to 12 weeks. At the end of that, you will write a thesis. And this thesis uh, can lead this research can lead to a publication. In other words, you can generate and make a contribution to some research that's going on in the laboratory at that time. Let me give you some examples of the type of research ongoing. This is Professor Jane Farr, and Jane has been working on uh, how the eye works, and in particular, how eye the area of eye diseases. And they uh, made many seminal discoveries in, in in a variety of, of uh, 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 different eye diseases. In addition to discovering how the eye works and what goes wrong in, in terms of disease, Jane has set up a company called Genable, which is to use the information and the technologies that they have developed to bring these technologies to people uh, suffering from these genetic uh, diseases. So the research is not just Fundamental research, of course, it is fundamental research, but it's also research and using that knowledge for the, the application to uh, genetic eye diseases. Professor Joan Gagan uh, works on uh, Staphylococcus aureus. You'll know about Staphylococcus aureus and MRSA, methicillin resistant Staph aureus, the so called superbug. And this is a huge uh, problem antibiotic resistance. Is a huge problem and one of the major problems facing uh, society uh, today. So many things wouldn't be possible if we didn't have uh, ways in which we could control uh, infection. And you can see here an experiment. This is a bacterium that's spread on growing on a plate and that's the, the haze in the background. And then each of these discs has an antibiotic applied to the disc so the disc is put onto the plate. And whenever you see a halo around the disc, as here, you can see that this bacterium is sensitive to this antibiotic. So it's sensitive to this antibiotic and this antibiotic and this antibiotic. But you can see here two antibiotics in which this bacterium has become completely resistant. This one completely resistant, this one with a very low level of, of sensitivity to the antibiotic. This is Professor Luke O'Neill, uh, and Luke studies uh, the immune system and inflammation. And Luke was uh, sem made seminal discoveries on about the uh, inflammasome and the inflammasome complex, and he showed that this gene NLRP3 is a major control point in triggering inflammation. And this was a, a seminal discovery. Uh, because being a regulator of inflammation, the potential exists that if one could control the activity of this regulator, then you could control uh, inflammation. And of course, <clears throat> uh, they were able to develop uh, an inhibitor of NLRP3, and thereby this inhibitor would be uh, potentially applicable to a whole variety of, of uh, autoimmune type diseases, uh, like atherosclerosis, Parkinson's, allergies, asthma, autoimmune diseases, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis. All of these diseases are caused by uh, inflammation in one way or the other. And this inhibitor of NLRP3 is a potential uh, um, uh, drug 
to, to lessen and control each of these uh, diseases. And this is a seminal breakthrough, and Luke set up a company called Inflazone, uh, designed to develop uh, therapies for inflammatory diseases. And this uh, co uh, company, Inflazone, was recently sold to Roche, where we'll take uh, some of these inhibitors and do clinical trials to see uh, how uh, successful they are in controlling inflammation. So this program uh, in the biological and biomedical sciences is really not just a program to, to give you an education in, in the biological sciences, but really an education for life. It's a rigorous training in a field, it's teaching you how to think independently and creatively. The employment and career prospects are outstanding because you have a, a very uh, fundamental uh, uh, education with many transferable skills. For example, in, you, in data handling and statistics, in communication and presentation, in creative and critical thinking, problem solving, and ag agile learning. All of these skills you will develop as you go through the course. And these skills, of course, you will develop while studying the uh, biology and biomedical sciences. And all of these will contribute to, to acquiring the Trinity College Dublin graduate attributes. And that is to think independently, to communicate effectively, to grow continuously, and to act responsibly. So the question then, what do our science graduates do? What do they go on to do when they graduate? About one third go on to be professional scientists. That is, they go on to do research in academia or research in industry or in research organizations. About a third will go on to either teach and use these qualifications to teach, go on to medicine or journalism, law or agriculture, or go into administration. And about a third will, uh, will go outside of the science area, but relying on the transferable skills that I mentioned uh, while training in science, using these transferable skills in other areas and in, uh, in other fields. Finally, let me give you one story of a Trinity College graduate, Bill Campbell. Uh, Bill Campbell is a, a graduate of the Trinity College Dublin Zoology Department. He graduated in 1952. And Bill was shared the 2015 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine with Satoshi Amura. And their seminal discovery was concerning a novel therapy against infections for roundworm parasites. This is perhaps one of the uh, heart -wrench most heart-wrenching pictures. You can see here are two adults and both of these adults have, are infected with this roundworm. And these adults are now, because of this infection, are blind. And these adults are being led along by a child, probably not yet infected with this roundworm. And this terrible disease, river blindness, is prevalent in Central and South America and also in large parts of Africa. And what Bill Campbell did was to discover the production of a compound from Streptomyces uh, avermitilis. And this is a molecule here called ivermectin. And ivermectin was found to be particularly effective in the cure of river blindness. And not just effective in curing river blindness, but also had very, very little side effects. And this basic biological mo molecule uh, was modified by chemists produced by the bacteria, but then modified by chemists to become uh, even more effective. And on October 1987, the Merck uh, pharmaceutical company announced plans to donate mectazan, which is essentially uh, ivermectin, a new medicine designed to, to combat this river blindness for as long as it might be needed uh, in collaboration with the World Health Organization. And over 30 years later, more than 2.9 billion cumulative treatments have been 
uh, given over those 30 years to more than 146,000 communities. And this um, terrible disease is now largely controlled in, 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 in uh, parts of Central and South America and also uh, in Africa and will continue until it's uh, completely eliminated. And I mention this because Bill is a graduate of uh, the zoology science program here in Trinity and you too could come and graduate and win a Nobel Prize in physi physiology or medicine or insert your own name here for discoveries leading to. So it could be you. But whatever you do while your time here at Trinity College, uh, you will be happy, and these are the graduates of a number a couple of years ago from the uh, genetics department, all just graduate, newly graduated, and as you can see, happy people. Thank you.